everybody, and welcome to Mrs. Geis Zoo in the Classroom. Today we're going to be talking about several freshwater species of turtle. Now, the turtles that I have here are uh, uh, under a year old, so right now I'm temporarily housing them together. Um, and then as they grow, they'll be able to be separated and moved into larger enclosures. Let's look at the six different species that we have. The first one, this is known as a red-eared slider. Red-eared sliders are probably the most common pet turtle that we have in the pet trade right now. Red-eared sliders have an excellent example of something called countershading in the animal kingdom. Countershading is when you have a dark back. The back of a turtle is called a carapace. And they have a light belly. That light belly is called the plastron. Now these features are unique because they actually help them blend in with their environment. For example, if a predator was trying to attack from overhead, this dark back would help with blending into the water. Whereas if a predator is trying to hunt them from the bottom, this lighter plastron or belly of the turtle would actually blend in more with the top of the water or the sky when the sun hits it and reflects. Um, this is a, a very interesting feature that we, that we see, like I said, throughout the animal kingdom. This is known as a side neck turtle, specifically a pink bellied side neck turtle. You can see that it's a lot different because it's pulling its head to the side rather than straight in. It also has a nice pink belly associated with it where it got its name. The last turtle here is known as a Rio Grande slider. Rio Grande sliders are known for their beautiful carapace of pastel-like colorations as well as a bright underbelly as well. Some other turtles that we have, these ones are a little bit more active. This is the Mississippi map turtle. Mississippi map turtles got their name because they look like they have little tiny road maps all over the top of their carapace. And remember the carapace is the top of a turtle shell. We also have a European slider. European sliders are very common throughout Europe. And then we also have a river cooter. River cooters are actually known for their sizes and can actually grow um, to very large sizes as adults. So the features that all of these turtles have in common is that they all have a very similar lifespan. These turtles can live anywhere from 35 to 50 years, so they are a commitment when keeping them in captivity. They also need a good source of UVA and UVB bulbs um, in order so that they can have their shells developing properly. They're also omnivores too, which means that they eat things like feeder fish and earthworms, krill and crickets and freshwater shrimp and dubia roaches, but they also eat vegetation too. So an omnivore is actually an animal that eats both plants and animals. So you can see some are a little shy and some are not as shy. So let's take a look at where we keep our turtles. So our turtles have this nice little environment where they have both a UVA uh, bulb and UVB bulb as well as a heat lamp. They have a good filtration system uh, which helps out with keeping their water clean because believe it or not, turtles are actually pretty dirty animals. They require a lot of care and water changes. And as you can see, they're excellent swimmers. So as a review, the top of the turtle shell is called the carapace. The bottom of the turtle shell is called the plastron. They are omnivores, which means that they eat both animals and plants.
and they require UVA and UVB bulbs in order to help with shell development. So if you have any comments, I would love to hear from you. You can email me at G-E-I-S-T-C at C-M-S-D dot K-12 dot P-A dot U-S. Thanks, guys.